I would like to extend warmest Sabbath greetings to all. And may I also take this time to gently and lovingly remind the Marian family that we of the household of faith extend our condolences and prayer that the comfort of the Holy Spirit remains with you in this your time of great need. You are not alone. I have just crossed that bridge. Be strong. We are there with you. Brethren, regardless of your age, you are that number of years closer to the return of Jesus than when you were born. If we ever needed a savior, this world ever needed a savior, it is now. As we watch and observe the conditions in the world, the fields seem ripe for harvest. Our race, brethren, seems to be approaching the home stretch. In our four part series, Running the Race, we have come to step three. We looked at step one, faith. We all remember that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. And that without faith, it is impossible to please God. In step two, we look at the works. And I'm sure that remember, brethren, quite well, that faith without works is dead. We may recall that the greatest work that we have in this race to everlasting life is the fight against the flesh the deeds of the flesh, our lustful desires generated by the carnal mind, which is enmity against God. Today, we are looking at step three. That step is found 310 times in the King James Bible, 340 times in the New American Standard Bible, 551 times in the New International Version, and 538 times in the New Revised Standard Version. All these are based in part to translations. The word can be found millions of times, brethren, in songs in diverse languages. The word we are looking for appears 57 times in the Gospel of John. That's more than in all the three Gospels combined. It is also found 46 times in the first epistle of John. And why? It is very important. That's why it's mentioned so many times. If you turn with me to Genesis 27 and verse 4, we will find the appearance of that word in the Bible. Genesis 27 and 4. And it says, and make me savory meat such as I love, and bring it to me that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. Can someone tell me what that word we are looking for is? Or would you like to jot it down before I say, before I mention it? Jot the word down and see if it's what word I'm looking for. The word from that verse. Brethren, you are right. There is nothing that I can tell you about love that you do not know. We know that the author of love is God. Yes, for God is love and love is of God. In my research and my preparation, brethren, I found in the Hebrew language, the word that translates love describes a variety of intensely close emotional bonds. And we have examples as that of Abraham loving his son, Isaac, in Genesis 22 and verse 2. And Delilah manipulating Samson by challenges, challenging his love for her, as you find in Judges 14 and 16. These are forms of love, brethren. And there are other translations, other words that describe varying forms or degrees of love. In the Greek language, for example, in which the Bible has been translated, we find words, for example, like agape. I hope I pronounced it correctly. A-G-A-P-E. 
which is unconditional selfless love. We have filia, brotherly love, friend bond. We have eros, erotic love or romantic love. There is a word L-U-D-U-S, and I don't know if the pronunciation is Ludus, which is the infatuated or playful love. You know, maybe when you're young, this is one that plays on us. We have S-T-O-R-G-E, and it may be pronounced Torge, and it is referring to companion love or empathy love. There is M-A-N-I-A, which is mania, I suppose, obsessive love. You know, when people are young, they're filled with that type of love. And your daughter may be speaking to you and she might be calling daddy in her boyfriend's name and vice versa. They're obsessed, filled with it. And then there's another word, pragma, P-R-A-G-M-A, which is practical love. These are just to show us that love is such a very wide, has a very wide meaning that it is very difficult to give a specific meaning of love. But the Bible does tell us God's definition of love. However, brethren, for this third and vital step of love, there is something that God wants us to be reminded of. As this most solemn feast of the year, the Passover approaches, as we ready ourselves to partake of the event that signifies the greatest demonstration of love, God wants us to do a reality check. The question is, where does our love originate? Where does our love originate? Jesus had this to say in Mark 7 and verse 6. You don't have to turn there, but you can note it. He answered and said unto them in Mark 7 and 6, Well has Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, the people honor me with their hearts. Sorry, the people honor me with their lips, but their hearts is far from me. Brethren, God wants us to understand that love, a fruit of the Spirit, requires that with the help of that very Spirit, we sacrifice or kill our human nature and build godly, righteous character. It begins with the circumcision of the heart. David, brethren, as we recall, was called a man after God's own heart because of his about turn and plea. And remember this cry to God in Psalms 51. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me, he said. In Psalms 51 and 17, he says, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. So we need to commit, brethren, our heart to God for refurbishing at this time in particular. True love comes from the heart. It is the gift that God enabled by the Holy Spirit so that he can give us, so that we can serve him in spirit and in truth. His desire for us is to love the Lord, our God, brethren, with all our heart, our might, our soul, our strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Such attitude sums up his laws, the Ten Commandments. And let us remember that love, brethren, is the fulfilling of the law. We may perform thousands of acts of kindness, That can be tangible expressions of the emotions that accompany love. We can make great, great apparent sacrifices, but the love that God wants us to show him and others can only be ascribed to such actions if the intention is sincerely from our hearts. In Spanish, we say la segunda intención, the ulterior motive. We need to ask ourselves, brethren, at this time, 
what is our heart's intent? Remember these examples that were given us in God's word, the widow's might. And just think of it and recall. See what strikes you there, brethren. The publican and the Pharisee. The rich young ruler. Brethren, this Passover and beyond, let our third step of the race be God oriented. Let it be love that comes straight from our heart. We are aware, brethren, of the conditions that exist in the world. Today, the world spells love, L-U-V, and the world lives L-U-S-T. Everything, brethren, that we see around us through God's eyes happens to be just the opposite of what God wants it to be and what we should be. And this is why God tells us to come out of the world and be separate. If there is a time that is fitting to do this, brethren, it is always. But this time in particular of the year is an extremely appropriate time. When we have example of the greatest sacrifice that was ever made for man. And we know fully well what John 3.16 says. I think it is one of the most quoted verses in the Bible. Brethren, we need to look at the heart. And I want us to end with these two verses. Proverbs 4 and 23. Proverbs 4 and 23. You can turn there. Proverbs 4 and verse 23. It says, Keep thy heart with diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Brethren, as we continue to run with patience the race that is set before us, let us, and particularly at this season of God's holy days, ask the Father for help we need, as the psalmist did. We've seen his cry to God, creating me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. And finally, brethren, if we turn to Psalm 139, Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24. Let us meditate on these, brethren. Psalm 139, Verses 23 to 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the everlasting way. For brethren, now and always, and maybe now, more than ever before, as we see the conditions in the world deteriorate. And we know that the return of Jesus Christ is imminent. Let us be as a five wise virgin. Let us trim our lamps. Let us oil them, brethren. And let us be prepared for the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So that when he returns, he will find us worthy. For in our heart condition is the determination, is the determination of love that God requires us to exercise. The condition of our heart, brethren, 
would generate the type of love that God expects of us. And so, brethren, let us run with patience this race, with love that leads to life. Okay. Okay.